Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about validation based protocol. To define this validation, we will first define the view serializability. Then we will talk about what is an validation and how we can implement this validation based protocol to our schedule so that we can achieve the serialization on this conflict serializability but we can see that it will not free from the starvation as a result. And we will see that it is also an optimistic concurrency control protocol other than comparing to the other, which is being a pessimistic one. Now let us describe all of this in elaboratively. Validation control protocol validate for each write, then performing it for a transaction. For to know about a validation based protocol, we first define the view serializability. View serializability of two schedules, C schedule S and S dash, can be reduced if we can say that the serial schedule that we are producing are not conflict serializable, but they are serializable other than the conflicting operation. Then we can say that they are view serializable on these two schedules. Now let us define an example and to say that how view serializability can be achieved. So now my serial schedule S is view equivalent to serial schedule S dash if this following condition that we can satisfy. Now if there is any data item Q on serial schedule S that we can perform TI produces the initial read on this data item Q, then we need to define that this S dash also have this TI to produce this initial read on data item Q. That means the read data item on this both the schedule S and S dash must be same for each of this transaction. Now if there is in the schedule S, we are having an TI who is performing this read Q that has a timestamp less than this TJ. That means the TJ has appeared after this TI which has been performing this right Q. Now we need to define that in also S dash, we are having TI which is performing this read Q and also that is less than this TJ which is performing this write Q. So now we can say in both S and S dash we are performing this read operation on Q that has been another write operation from another transaction. And the final one is if the TI is performing this final write Q on the schedule S then it must also perform this final write Q on schedule S dash. That means if it is the Q then TI goes for the final write in data item Q then we can see in S dash also we are having TI producing this final write on data item Q. Now if we can achieve these three conditions then we can say that S is view equivalent to S dash. Now let us define this with an example. Now say we are having two schedule S and S dash where S is in combination of T1, T2, T3 in such a way that T1 is happening before T2 and after that T3 is producing. And S dash is in set of T4. So now we can say that S and S dash are equivalent or view equivalent because we can see that the read item Q that is the initial of this T1 in the schedule S and also we have a T4 in schedule S dash which is performing the initial read on this data item Q. Now after that we can say that there is a write Q that has been performed by this T2 also that is before the T1 read Q has been performed. So we are going for the second one and it is also true for these two cases. Now for the third one that if any schedule S that is T3 on S performing the final write on data item Q. So there is also this S dash on T4 transaction that is performing this final write on data item Q. So the three of these conditions are being satisfied and now we can say that T1, T2, T3 
is v u equivalent to t4 because the three conditions has been satisfied. Now we can see and go for our next condition that is in the validation post protocol. Now every step of this V equivalent, well we can say that it is not conflict serializable because there are conflicting operations because there's read queue and write queue. Same data item performed in the same schedule onto different transactions. On this, at least one of them is write operation. So now this is conflicting but also view equivalent or view serializable. Now the validation protocol just checks for the validation in each of the step to define that for every write while in the timestamp protocol or in the Thomas write protocol, we are either rejecting and rollbacking or just ignoring the writes. So other than ignoring and deleting the obsolete writes, it validate the writes in such a way that it can achieve by writing this the, at the end of this transaction. So when the transactions are about to commit, then it is performing all the writes in the schedule so that we can have no absolute writes or no writes that is not ignored or not rejected. So now let us define this validation best protocol. So it is like monitoring for a schedule and validate the writes by monitoring the writes bar each transaction. So for this validation based protocol, we are having three phases with us. The first one is the read phase. The read phase stands for every phase on this validation based protocol or the scheduling that we are following that we can have on this phase all the reads that is being performed by these transactions. So now it is more like a two phase locking protocol where we can say that there is a growing phase and shrinking phase for acquiring lock and releasing lock. Like in this read phase we are having all the reads or we can just have the value not updated but has been modified. Now if there is an write in this phase then it will write to the temporary variable not on this data item Q. The next is the write phase. Now in the write phase which happens after the validation phase that is if the write is validated then every temporary value that is holding for the modification that is being performed on a data item Q now need to be copied to the database and the database need to be updated in this write phase. So now we can have the TI is performing write Q with all the temporary variables that go to the database updation. Now final is the validation phase that moves with the validation based protocol. Now this validation phase just validates the write. That means it will produce and checks for this validity on a write that before preceding the write, it checks that whether it failed to meet the serializability constraint or not. If it succeeded with all the serializability constraint, then it is ready to produce and write this data item and go to the write phase. Other than the system will abort the transactions for that particular write. So now in the validation phase, it just validate the data item that is right on Q. Now if it is failed on the serializability constraint, then the system aborts the transaction. So now we will abort the TI. So these are the three phases on which we will build our validation based protocol. Now the validate write queue goes with the validation based protocol. Now to go with this validation based protocol, we are having three timestamps that is associated to with. One is the start, next is the validation, and final is the finish. The start TI goes for when the transaction TI start its execution. That means the system clock is now recorded for the TSTI. So now we can say that SI being assigned for this TSTI. Next is the validation TI. Now the validation VI mark the system clock on which it finish its read phase and is about to start its write phase. So now the SI belongs to TS read TI less than TS write TI. And the final one is finish TI. 
The finish TI will mark for the transaction is finishing its last write or finishing and committing the transaction. So now we can say that we are having this validation based protocol satisfied if there exists a TI that goes with the timestamp is equal to the validation timestamp on TI and also there is two transaction TJ and TK in this way. Now we are having this timestamp TI equals to validation timestamp of TI. Why we are not having this start TI but having this validation TI? Because the validation TI mark for the end of this read phase and start of this write phase. That means it will give us better and faster response time than this start TI which starts the initial read phase of this transaction. Now after that if we have this any two transaction TJ and TK in such a way that TJ appears before than TK then we can say in any schedule S we can have TI validating between this TJ and TK. That means now TJ can be performed before the TI's read phase and TK can be performed after the TI's right phase. So now the validation test holds for if these two conditions satisfied. Now we can say that the first one it will hold that finish of this TK that means TK will perform its last write before the starting of this TI that means TI is reading all the value that TK has already been written. So now the TK write will be read by this TI. Then we can say that TI can be validated and TI can produce the right queue because there is already one transaction which is written on queue and TI has read the value from that right. Now the next condition specifies that if there is any set of values that TK is having the right on any set of values QI to QN then there is no set of values on TI which is writing on the same data items at the same time. That means the start TI must be less than finish TK. So whenever the TI is reading some values, then already it is being written by this TK. So the write of this TI and TK does not overlap. That means there is no two transactions that has overlapping the write operations because the validation on TI. So the start on this write phase on TI can be performed only after the TK has finished its last write. So now TK has written it and TI can write the updated value on this set of data QI to QN. So if this two condition satisfies then we can say that the validation is being performed and we can write and proceed this operation on the transaction TI. Now let us define this validation based protocol with an example. Now on this T1 say we are having this read on data item B. Now on T2 we are reading this B then we are temporarily writing this B onto an variable. Now we are reading the value of A and also writing the value to the temporary variable of A. Now let us look at this validation based protocol. See that we are having the start on T1 that is less than equals to start on T2. That means two timestamps on T1 and T2. T1 is having started its initial phase. After that T2 is starting its read phase. So now both of this transaction is performing its read phase. Now the next phase that both of it will perform is the validate phase. But because the before on this validation phase, we are having on the T1 its final read. Now on T1, after reading the value, we are providing the validation phase. So till now we can say it is the read phase that we are having. After that we will have the validation phase with both A and B. So the validate phase will check that in the schedule S that we are having two transaction T1 and T2 and not overwriting and overlapping the values of A and B with T1 and T2. The T2 has been performing the temporary write and T1 is only reading. That means the data has been validated and the write can be done in the next step. So now for this T2 it need to validate the data. Now after on the T2 side also that we are having the read one from this T1 that is the less than T2 that is what is happening on the T2 write. So the first and second both the conditions are being satisfied. Now after that this validation phase is here we will write the value in the write phase. So on the write phase we will write B and write A 
finally we will display a and b so now if there is an initial value of a is 100 and b is 200 so what t1 is reading t1 is reading this b that is 200 after that t2 is performing 50 deduction and the insertion of 50 in the account a so now the temporary value of a becomes 150 and 200 becomes also 150 so now we are having this one as the old value this one as the temp value and the new value is yet to be written so now what happens see here we are reading the a so now a has not been written till now so we are also having the old value of a that is 100 and it is 200 so now comes with the validate phase that will check for the validation for the write and read in t1 so now when this display a plus b is here we are having the 300 at this 100 plus 200 because it is before the validation phase so we are only having read this old value to this transaction now for this validation phase as this completed here and now we can write the values of b and a so now my b and a is being updated with this new value 150 so now when we are writing and displaying the value it is also 300 but now we are having 150 plus 150 equals to 300 so if we are displaying a and b individually so it will have been shown 150 and 115 each now this is the example of a timestamp based protocol that is defined to have a validation phase with this validate function and can have named within validation based protocol now what is the difference between this basic timestamp two phase locking protocol and this validation based protocol the two phase locking and this timestamp based protocols are pessimistic in nature because they can either reject the transaction TI or they can ignore the transaction TI. But here in this validation based protocol, it is optimistic concurrency control because it never rejects a transaction or it never also ignores a write operation on a transaction it just validate the write operation in such a way so that it can have the write operation performed at the end of the transaction so to perform the cascadelessness so it just support the cascadelessness on a transaction so that we can have that every writes we are having until and unless all the read phase and validation phase has been performed and now the writes are having at the end of the transaction so now the transaction is about to commit so there is no need to cascade rollback on a transaction so we can see that this supports the serializability not the conflict serializability and also this one on the validation best can go for the starvation because the long transaction it needs repeated restarts where the short transactions that has been conflicting operations to each other so now we say that the system aborts this type of transaction and the long transaction may reach for long starvation period because they are repeatedly restarting their transactions. So we can have the cascadelessness that is supported by this validation best but not the starvation and also it is not free from this deadlock. So that is all for this validation based protocol which is an optimistic concurrency control mechanism and modified version of the timestamp and locking based protocol. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.